What is going on guys? This is Daniel and today is part two of my advanced NBA concept series and today we'll be taking a look at advanced switches. We all know what a switch is and a basic switch for example is switching a ball screen but there are advanced switches NBA teams utilize as well. Let's get to it. The first switch involves two bigs switching with each other. Let's set the stage. Most NBA defenses will use ice defense or whatever you want to call it to not allow middle on a sideline pick and roll. So Glenn Robinson here should come up and not allow Derrick Rose to use the screen toward the middle. But players are human. Here Robinson allows the screen toward the middle and what this does is allow Hernan Gomez to be open on the roll as there's no one there from the weak side to bump him and he gets the pass and he gets fouled. When the on-ball defender does accidentally allow middle on the pick and roll, this is where a big switching strategy could work. What will happen is Cantor comes off his man on the baseline to cover Davis on the roll. Taj Gibson, who contains the ball first and then on the pass, drops down and switches with Cantor and they force a tough shot. On the first clip, Hernan Gomez gets right to the rim on the roll, but on this play, Davis is met immediately on the catch. The problem with this strategy is that for a second, Cantor has to worry about his man as well as rotating over to Davis. This wasn't an issue here, but if Monte Yunus had flashed to the ball and made himself a target, this might have been very difficult to defend for Cantor or any defender, but hey, that's not what happened here. The reason you use the big switch instead of simply switching the ball screen is obvious. If Hardaway had switched onto Gasol here, that's a mismatch. Instead, Ilya Silva rotates on the weak side to take Gasol, Millsap drops down on the pass, and Ilya Silva is a much bigger defender who can guard Gasol. Another situation where the big to big switch can be used is on a simple down screen. Paul George runs off a down screen, curls it toward the middle, and it's the exact same situation as the middle pick and roll as they'll execute this switch, contain the screen of rolling, and force a very tough shot. This big to big switch can be used to defend middle pick and rolls, pin downs, as well as the pick and pop. David West is defending Horford here and he has to contain the ball and Horford has an open shot but Green comes off his man Kelly Olynyk to take Horford. When the pass is made, West drops down to take Olynyk and they contain it quite nicely. But keep in mind this only really works when the offense has two traditional bigs and it works the best when the defense has two traditional bigs on the floor as well, so it's not for every lineup. Moving on to two switches in a row. The Cavs switch the initial ball screen and what this does is put Irving on Morris, which is a mismatch. So LeBron and Irving will quickly switch on the weak side so they don't have that matchup with Morris and that's what happens here and they force a difficult shot. Watch Irving very closely. There's the first switch, then the second switch. The Mavericks switch this first ball screen because they don't want Westbrook attacking downhill, but this leaves Yogi Ferrell, who's only six foot, on Cantor. So Ferrell will switch with Matthews, and Matthews on Cantor is still a mismatch, but it's not nearly as bad as having Ferrell on him, and the offense stalls a bit. I'm going to call this the double switch and I'm fascinated with this versus the pick and pop. So Porzingis is a pick and pop threat and so the Jazz switch the first screen. So what happens is Shelvin Mack is on Porzingis, not ideal. So Trey Lyles and Mack switch and now the size advantage isn't nearly as prominent. It's important to note this is far from a flawless strategy. The double switch can take care of the screener having a mismatch, but you still have the mismatch on top with a big guy on a guard. But even with its flaw, this may be the best way to defend the pick and pop. Hedging is often used, but that's so tough, so easy to make a mistake. Here's just one example of this happening as OKC hedges and gives up an easy driving kick. Let's talk about switching on post-ups, which can also be a double switch. 
Jordan Clarkson will switch onto Gortat, and the Wizards actively try to post Gortat up. So Randall and Clarkson will switch in unison with Randall taking Gortat and Clarkson sprinting to the weak side, and this completely stymies the post up on this play, and the Lakers force a tough shot. I wouldn't normally be this technical, but I feel it's appropriate in this video. So technically, Clarkson and Randall didn't switch, as Clarkson didn't switch onto Morris, who Randall was guarding, he went to Porter. Brewer, who's bigger than Clarkson, dropped down to take Morris, so it was kind of like a triple switch. And this is just an example how NBA defense is hard, and it takes a lot of communication and being able to process a bunch of things at once. Curry is guarding the bigger Olenek down low, and this is a terrific example of the post switch going wrong. JaVale McGee tries to execute the switch, but Curry isn't on the same page. What happens is, McGee comes too far over, McGee ends up leaving the man he was guarding to Repco open, cross court pass, splash. What about a switch when the post player has the ball already? This is what happens here, as Thompson is guarding Horford, and Thompson and Green will switch while Horford has the ball. And it works on this play, and Horford takes a tough fadeaway. This is actually a legit strategy. What it is is basically a half second double team, and then the smaller guard will sprint to the weak side and find a man. This time, it completely blows up the post up, and the Jazz have to do something else. Outside of communication, there are two keys to do this right. Number one is that the guard defending the post can't leave the ball until the big man comes. If he does, that could result in an open shot or a drive. The second key is that the three off-ball defenders must zone between the four off-ball offensive players, just like you do on any other time you double the post. Well, there you have it guys. First, understand the fact that this is basic in the sense that you've probably done most of this stuff in pickup basketball, but it's complex in the sense that it's very tough to communicate, NBA teams don't really do it often, it's often not planned, just kind of on the fly, though this stuff could be planned more often, so it's kind of just... It's, it's a factor, but it's not something that is ice defense, rotate from the weak side, basic stuff. Also, I do really want to keep these concept videos to about 5 minutes, but in this video, there was so much stuff to get to and value to deliver, I had no choice. And because this video was longer and more detail oriented, if you're feeling a bit of an information overload, this is normal. I recommend watching this video again in a few days, understand the concepts, let it sink in, and that should help a lot. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.